Hey everybody, welcome to the channel. This video is about servos. Not the best, but what is good enough and the right size to use in a Soarcraft airframe. This is a quick explanation of the servos I use for the design, sizes and suggestions, but in the end, you can use whatever you want. These are 9 gram servos or sub micro servos. And these are 5 gram servos or nano servos. There are many other sizes and flavors of good servos. And the old standard size servos are huge. The 9 gram servo size seems to be the current most popular and available size. Kind of like the 9 gram size is the new standard. Most all of my wing servo pockets are 23 and a half millimeters wide, 18 millimeter lower, and sized to fit a 12 millimeter ish wide servo, which should be more than enough room to fit your standard size 9 gram servo. Other brands might be slightly different size, but they're all about the same. Most wings, the servo cover can mount flush. However, some designs have a relief in the cover to get the full 12 millimeter width. Hot glue is still my preferred method of mounting. It's easy, secure, and very versatile. The heat also helps form the cover to fit flush and can be serviced or removed without damaging everything. I could make a more complicated mount, but why? The 9 gram servos are also used in the slope radio tray for elevator, or elevator and rudder, or the two servo V tail. Or the single 9 gram servo easily fits under the wing with the power pod, which works great even for single servo V tail. The 5 gram servos are only used for the two servo under wing mount with the power pod for adding rudder function, or two servo V-tail, or in the T-tail with the servo. The important dimension of these servos is the width at eight and a half millimeters. The smaller size is also lower torque, but not lower cost. And overall, the nine gram servo is still a better bang for the buck. If you do a search for 9 gram servos, there are lots to choose from, but you will definitely find these SG90 servos. They are very popular with the STEM robotics kits, and they seem to be everywhere, easily available and super cheap. Enough torque at one kilogram per centimeter for small light stuff. They're analog with a rather large dead band, which isn't the best for precise centering plastic gears that can be kind of weak, and it's not uncommon for one not to work right out of the box. But for under $1.50 each, they can be a fun option if used right. Keep the servo arm short and you won't notice the lack of precision, and for an inexpensive lightweight build, they seem to have plenty of torque. Now for a slight step up in cost is the MG90 servos. They have twice the torque of the SG90s and come with metal gears. These cast metal gears are far stronger than plastic, but are not as strong and precise as machine gears. But for under two bucks a pop, they could be a lot of fun and add some durability without much cost. Are they perfect? Definitely not. They are still analog, but the dead band doesn't seem to be as bad as the plastic gear version. I had fewer dead on arrival problems with these MG90s, but loose gear tolerances make for some examples with too much slop. So some sorting might be necessary to find the better ones. That one's nice. At only two grams heavier and twice the torque of plastic geared SG90s, they are pretty impressive for the price. But make sure you buy the 180 degree version. The 360 degree version is good for robots, but will not work with your airplane receiver. Again, 
These MG90s are not perfect, but they are good enough. And I use them in most of my builds, including my cheap DS builds, which can do this. Nice. $10 total in servos. Good, fast, fun, but maybe not a record breaker. And usually ends like this. Oh! <laughs> Bad pilot oh, skills to blame, not cheap servos. Woo. I had hours of fun with this plane before this happened. Totally it. worth it. I haven't found any ultra cheap 5 gram servos worth buying. I came across these 2.5 gram servos. They are small and light. They do work. They might be good for something smaller, but I'm not sure they're the right answer for this application. They're just a little too sloppy. These 3.7 gram servos claim to be digital, and they at least have some screws holding it together. These could work, but are not a bargain, and lack some quality and precision, I would get something else. Like these, the Emacs ES9051s. Not ultra cheap, but much better servo than the other two. Digital, plastic gears, but the plastic gears are way more precise. Really nice fit. Where these servos are used are not as susceptible to damage as the wing servos are. So spending a little more won't be lost in the first crash. If you know of a better, cheaper 5 gram servo, let me know in the comments. There are many other 9 gram servos available. The Emacs brand seems to be a good level up. They're inexpensive, but quality and consistent. The ES8 is pretty good, but for just a little bit more, you can get the ES9, which has a little bit more power. Both are available as digital and metal gear, Aloft Hobbies, and Windcatcher RC have a good selection and good prices. The ES09MD has been my go-to upgrade until recently at 2.6 kilograms per centimeter torque and good precision, it's a pretty good servo. But this ES3352 might be even better. Similar price, digital, metal gears, and with just a little bit more power, and it's a bit narrower at nine millimeters instead of 12, and can fit flush in the shallower servo pockets like on the DS wings. So for the 5 gram servos, already talked about the ES9051s, but Emacs also has an ES9052. Same size, digital, but metal gears. With 1.3 kilograms per centimeters of torque. Good quality, good precision. And easily available at multiple places at a good price. However, the current Ultimate T-Tail DS upgrade is the KST X08. Power and precision in a small package. Pricey at 50 bucks each, but paired with four Emacs ES3352s in the wings, and you get Jake Malkin's recipe for his 225 mile per hour T-Tail Juicy record holder. The added precision in the tail is worth the cost, according to Jake. Way to go, Jake. The servos help, but he is a great pilot. Thanks for letting us know your speed secrets. I'll be trying them out myself soon. There are many options for servos for the Soarcraft models to fit any budget and skill level. I hope you enjoyed this tour through cheap servos. Thanks for watching. Please like and subscribe. And check out my other videos about printing, different materials and testing, and flying these Soarcraft designs to the limits of what's possible.
This channel is funded by viewers like you purchasing my files on my website for printing planes just like this and helps me to continue to refine, develop, and share new ways of making them better, faster, and cheaper to hopefully benefit everyone. Or at least to have a good time. Nice.